To create a grid line, first make sure you're in a floor plan view um, in the browser window to the left. And then click on the home tab in the tool tray at the top. Doing that, you'll notice a grid tool. If you click on that, uh, you can start clicking anywhere in the drawing space. Um, your first click will start the grid line out. Um, and as you drag it up, you'll notice that Revit is automatically trying to snap to orthogonal directions. Um, drag it up to the length that you want, and a second click will place the grid line. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to hit escape a couple times to get out of the place grid line tool. You can change the name of the grid if you first select it. That turns it blue. Then you can double click in the um, bubble itself and change the name. You'll notice a check mark above the grid bubble. Uh, unchecking this makes it disappear. Uh, there's also one at the bottom of the grid line if you want to make a grid bubble appear and disappear. The little break icon underneath the grid bubble, clicking on that, lets you jog it over to the left and right, and you can drag the knuckle as well. Bringing it back into alignment will straighten that back out. If you wanted to break the grid line um, in the middle, uh, in case it's obscuring something in a drawing, you can actually swap it out for a type that has a break in it. Um, by selecting the grid line, you'll notice that the type selector at the top, you should be able to, to pull down the drag down menu and choose the different type, in this case, but with bubble gap. By selecting this different type, it's now giving me a grid line and it's changed it to a type that has a gap in it. And the handles uh, let you change the size of the gap um, for the grid line. I'm going to go ahead and um, select the grid line again and then change its type back to a regular grid line. To change the length of the grid line, you'll notice an open ended handle um, located just at the bottom of the bubble. If you click on that and hold down as you drag, you can stretch it out longer or make it shorter. There's also a handle um, at the bottom of the grid line as well. You'll notice a little 3D label next to it. And it's a little confusing, but basically since you're creating a 3D model, um, this grid line will be the same size in any view that you take of the model. Um, unless you um, turn the grid line into 2D mode by clicking on it, now what happens in 2D mode is the handle goes to a solid dot. And if you change its size here, um, it won't affect uh, the grid line, the same grid line in other views. It will only be this short in this view. Um, it's a little confusing. It'll make more sense when you're doing elevations, though. Um, if uh, you want to reset this back to 3D mode so that it's the same length in all the views, you can just uh, right click on the grid line itself and hit reset to 3D extents. It brings it back into 3D mode. And now when you shorten and len lengthen it here, it will automatically show up in the rest of the views. To make a copy of the grid line, just select it and the toolbar will change at the top to give you an option to hit copy. Clicking on that, I can click anywhere for a starting point, drag it out, and drag it out the distance I want, or I can just start typing in uh, the distance as well. Unlike AutoCAD, um, Revit's default increments are in feet, not inches. So if I type in five, it'll move it out five feet. If I type five space six, it'll move it out five feet, six inches, and then hit enter, uh, and it automatically moves it out. Once it's placed, if you want to change the position of the new grid, um, if you select it, you'll notice a temporary construction dimension appears. Um, this is in blue. Um, and this is just uh, giving you a distance it is from its next grid line. So if I want to move it over a couple feet, I can select the grid line and then click in the dimension and change it there and hit enter and it'll move it over. Also, you'll notice uh, with the second grid line, there's a little padlock. That's telling you that its bubble is aligned and constrained with the grid bubbles next to it. So if I um, click on its handle and drag it up, uh, the grid bubble next to it drags up as well. I can always, um, if I want to make the grid line stretch up um, separate from the rest, you can click on the padlock that will unconstrain it and you can move it up separately. If I move it back down and align it again, uh, the padlock will reappear. Also when drawing grid lines, um, they don't have to be a straight line also. If I go back to the home tab of the tool tray at the top and choose the grid tool again, you'll notice it starts me out with a straight line segment tool, but I can also make it curved. Um, I can make it circular. 
using this tool. And I can make, um, I can choose any existing edge or, or walls using this tool. And finally, one shortcut. Um, if you know you have a lot of grid lines to copy over, you can uh, copy them all at once using the array tool. So selecting a grid line, at the top in the tool tray, you'll see an array tool next to copy. Clicking on that, you'll see some new options in the option bar underneath. The first option is group and associate. Go ahead and uncheck group for now. Next is the number. Put in the number of copies you want with the one you started with. And then make sure it's in move to second. If I click a starting point, drag it out the distance I want, and hit enter, um, it automatically gives me the number of copies I want. And you can do this um, in the horizontal direction as well.